Hello, I'm David Dickey. We're at the University of Arkansas Division of Agriculture Research Station in Fayetteville. Um, today we, were, we are inside one of the uh, Strawberry High Tunnels and the date today is December 3rd, 2013. Inside the, this Strawberry High Tunnel we've recently started applying fertilizer to these strawberries by using fertigation. Today we want to talk a little bit about fertigation of specifically of our strawberry plants but we also want to relate this to to any keep it general enough where any of this information can be used for anything that's being drip irrigated. First off we want to introduce you to fertigation then we want to take a look at some of the equipment that we have here that's really specifically for the high tunnel and then we want to run some fertilizer to one of our plantings and then explain to you and give you some tips about running fertilizer and operating the fertigation system. Most commercial strawberry growers use trickle irrigation under black plastic uh, to water their strawberries. Also a major part of this is being able to apply nutrients through the water to the plants being able to do this is called fertigation. Um, while fertigating, there are certain, certain pieces of equipment and certain amounts of technology that you have to have in place to make sure that this is done properly. First thing I would like to say is that drip irrigation and fertigation are very efficient. It allows you to put precise amounts of water and nutrients uh, to your plants in over a period over a period of time. One of the first things that you want to do when you're setting up a fertigation system is to take several things into consideration. The first thing that you'd want to do is consider how much flow is going to the field or the plot that you're wanting to water or fertigate. Uh, the next thing is, is knowing how much flow you have from your water source. One of the things that you want to look at when considering your water source is how clean and the quality of that water. In all instances with fertigation or with uh, drip irrigation, you need to have some kind of filter on your system. Now that we've had a very basic introduction to fertigation, we want to show you some of the equipment that we're using in this particular high tunnel. Keep in mind there's many different ways and different products and different setups that you can use, but this will show you basically how to set up a fertigation unit and part of the drip irrigation. We've recently installed new plumbing to our new plantings and our new high tunnels here at the University of Arkansas Research Farm. Um, the shot that you're seeing now is a freeze-proof box in the corner of one of the high tunnels. Um, I'd like to point out that in this particular case we are raising strawberries through the winter and we're having to fertigate and or water about once a week. So it's very important that we have all of our uh, plumbing uh, accessible and freeze proof and live so all we have to do is turn on our water uh, to irrigate or fertigate the plants. Uh, what I'd like to do now is explain parts of the uh, fertigation unit that you're looking at here. Uh, first off, we have a freeze-proof box that's set underground. The first thing that we have in the plumbing is the main shutoff valve coming in uh, from the water source. Next, we have a 140 micron filter uh, for fresh water uh, from a municipal source such as this. This filter would probably be, would probably be adequate to uh, keep your drip drip tape emitters from stopping up. Next what we have here is what's called the fertigation loop. As you can see, if you can see the pipe that goes along here, the main transfer pipe, there's a valve, but then it also 
uh, on each end of the valve we have a tree coming up with a valve that comes up to the fertigator which goes down to another valve and I'll explain after a while why this is. After the fertigation loop <clears throat> we go up to a pressure regulator. Most of your drip tape is going to have to run, operate on a pressure of 8 to 12 psi. Usually it's figured as 10 psi. After the pressure regulator uh, it goes, this line goes out of the box to a piece of pipe called the header line in which the uh, drip tapes are connected to. Again we're looking in the uh, insulated fertigator box in the high tunnel. Um, what I'd like to explain to you now is the uh, fertigator loop that we have installed here. and We've done this for several reasons. Um, the grower would install a fertigator loop uh, mainly so he can inject fertilizer into a uh, irrigation water stream that the water volume going to the field is higher than what the injector flow rating is. Um, what we're able to do is with this particular injector if the this one has 3.5 gallons per minute flow through the injector. If all the water goes through the injector, the injector is going to cycle and pump the fertilizer solution into the irrigation water. If the, however, if the uh, flow to the field is higher than 3.5 gallons per minute, um, you won't have enough water going to your field. But with the injector loop you can mitigate that by um, a valve in the main line. You can open up that valve and let water go through but also make your this particular fertilizer injector cycle. We're going to run a little bit of fertilizer to one of our high tunnel strawberry plantings. Um, before I do anything, I've, I'll show you that I've pre-mixed some fertilizer in a canister here. We're, we're just administering very small amounts to, uh, to these plants. Um, and as you can see, it's blue. We've added some dye to uh, this fertilizer solution so you can see um, see it actually going into the injector. Um, usually the first thing you'll do after you mix up your fertilizer is get it placed and we're going to stick the suction hose in it. It's very important to remember that there will probably be some solid particles in your fertilizer solution and to always have a screen on the end of your suction hose prevent those particles from going into your injector. I'm going to place this inside in the fertilizer solution and I'm going to turn my main water valve on. Now with this particular injector it is in the off position and what I'm going to do is is I'm going to uh, turn the water on and pressure up the drip lines uh, in the high tunnel. I'll let it I'll let the water flow a little bit and fill the irrigation lines. As, as the irrigation lines, uh, the drip tape pressures up, you'll probably hear some uh, hissing and uh, noises because there may be a little bit of air in the lines. One, one part of a, uh, of a uh, <coughs> fertigation, drip irrigation loop that I do not have on this is what's called a uh, air relief valve 
and in many cases it's good to have one of those on your uh, grip system somewhere usually at the highest point in the field and what happens is is whenever the um, water is shut off it opens up and lets air come into the system and the reason that you'd use that is is because many times uh, if there's suction on the drip tape it could uh, actually bring uh, soil particles or trash into the very small emitters on the drip tape and clog those up. Okay now I think that the uh, water pressure is up to where it needs to be is pressured up on the irrigation lines I'm going to engage the injector. First thing I'm going to do here is put in the on position and then I'm going to turn the valves on the fertigation loop. Now I've got all the valves on the fertigation loop open and we have the, the injector is not cycling and that's and that's supposed to be that way for this and I've and I've built this fertigation loop so I can actually bypass more water through the system to the field than what the injector will handle and I'm going to demonstrate uh, how to bring your injector up if you're trying to feed more water through than what your injector uh, the flow vo uh, volume on the injector is As you can see, the valve down here is not all the way closed. There's still some flow going through the main line. But what I've done is created a pressure differential of around 5 psi on the inside of the injector and 5 pounds less on the outside. And this is enough to create flow through the injector to make the hydraulic pump cycle and move the solution out of the container into the injector into the irrigation water. And keep in mind there's a lot of different types of there's a lot of different ways to get uh, fertilizer into the injection inject fertilizer into the irrigation water. This is one there's uh, that we use um, it's a metered injector. They uh, can put in solution at a lot of different ratios. This one's adjustable. Um, for uh, research purposes, this particular one has an adjustment from uh, 2 to 5 percent. Um, one of the things that you might think about and one of the questions that comes up and does in my mind when I'm putting out fertilizer is how long should I let the system run. Um, ideally what you should do when you're injecting your fertilizer is figure out how long it takes for all of that fertilizer to be put in the vicinity of your plants or under the plastic mulch. Uh, one of the best ways to do that is is to that we use at the university is to add some uh, add some dye to your solution and watch the ends of your lines, um, watch the color at the end of your lines. And what usually, logically, when the, when the solution, when the dye solution is clear, more than likely you've probably put out all the fertilizer that you need to. Now that's not saying that you may need to put out more water and that, that would be, um, you'd have to determine that based off the moisture level and the requirements, moisture level of the soil and the requirements of the strawberries or whatever plant that you're trying to produce.